<laughs> it's nice to see you, you know, on a, in a casual outfit. Oh, yeah. Represent. Red Sox. <laughs> I, I try to watch as much baseball as I can. Greatest sport of all time. America's pastime. And everything else goes away when I watch baseball. I do consider myself a very organized person. Thank you for noticing that. You just have to keep your basics organized, your, your DVD collection. I mean, like the contents in your refrigerator and cabinets, I think. I'm sorry, did you say you alphabetize the things in your refrigerator? Yeah, I mean, each shelf is designed for specific types of food items. But on that specific shelf, I mean, if you have someone over, how are they going to know what goes back where? So, Stephen calls us all into his office to decide on what to do for the great big opening gala. And I am ready. I am so ready to blow these cats away with my pitch. So, thank you all for coming. Uh, we um, have a very important assignment from Superintendent Johnson. We have to make a big splash with this new uh, drama department. Oh, absolutely, Stephen. And I have a uh, Dr. Answer. Merriweather. Sure, yeah. And I'm sure you have a lot of ideas, but let's, we have to do this by consensus. So let's start with uh, Mr. Anderson. Sir? Uh, yes, do you have any ideas for our, our opening gala? Gala? Is it gala? Is it clear? I believe it's a uh, gala, sir. Gala. Gala. All right. Mm -hmm. Anderson, do you have any ideas about our gala? Oh, well, um, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be asked to, uh, I mean, it's not really my, um, uh, but if you are going to introduce the students to the community in an artistic manner, uh, it might be the most proficient way to go about that to produce a variety act, a, a, ta a talent show. A talent show. I mean, come on! Where are we? Are we in, like, Cheyenne, Wyoming, or Kansas City, Kansas? Miss Jennings. Two words, you guys. Hairband, power ballads. Franklin. Well, I'm really excited about Madrigal singing, sir. Um, you know, we could, uh, we have arias up in the music room that people have never used in years, you know, even some eight-part harmonies. And I was thinking we could put lighted candles all throughout the auditorium, you know, really take people back in time. And we could also get all the singers and put them in medieval costumes, you know, make it really Renaissance fairy. I mean, it's, it's kind of ironic, but people, people like ironic nowadays. Yeah. Okay, I know the magical thing was kind of out there, but seriously, we have Hundreds and hundreds of these arias here in the music room. What the f am I supposed to do with all these f***ing arias? Mr. Smits, I, um... I didn't know you were called to this meeting. Um... We don't have enough chairs, um... Do you mind standing? These pages are going to become a f***ing fire hazard. Sorry, you can bleep those out, right? Claire. Yes, thank you, sir. I think we actually have a very obvious solution here. We need to have the students working together creatively as an ensemble, yes. But I think we need a subject matter that is accessible to the community. So, baseball. Come on, it's perfect. We can continue what we were working on in last year's drama club, and we can do a musical rendition of Casey at the Back. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jordan, you have a comment? Oh, we were all very interested to hear what the great blonde Hope had to say. What? Casey at the bat? I'm sorry, I thought this was middle school. I am no expert on topical relevance, but I mean, baseball? Isn't that just a huge blemish on our country's history these days? I mean, no one wants to be reminded about how these guys all cheated their way into the record books. You know, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds. I mean, Casey was hopped up. Just saying. I have to admit, she had a point. <laughs> you know, honestly, I didn't even know who any of those people were, but uh, 
I, I have them backlogged in my brain because, well, um, my former fiance, who's a really big baseball fan, and he would just wake up in a cold sweat every night, you know, because of that whole drug thing. It was so stupid, you know, like, hey, Ron, asshole, how could you do this? You know, um, oh, uh, uh, Bonds, you're a bum, you're a bum, Bonds. And, uh, Clendons, oh, I could just, oh, I, I. Clemens. Oh, Clemens? Clemens. Clemens. Oh, right, like Roger Clemens clucking all the while, right. Yeah. It's one of the things people care about. <laughs> Clemens. Miss Jordan does have a point. We don't want to introduce our drama department in the midst of controversy. Claire, your idea's out. Smits, do you have any ideas? No, sir. Not anymore. People just don't understand performance-enhancing drugs. They hear PED and they automatically think that it's a bad thing. But they're wrong. Take Stacy, for example. Uh, she's a 12-year-old in our class. Uh, she comes from a broken home. She really didn't have any self-confidence or anything like that, but you just give her one injection and she can throw like the best of any guy out there. Well, that leaves you, Miss Jordan. I assume you have an idea or two. Actually, yes, yes, sir, I do. Uh, I have a lot of ideas, but I have narrowed it down to one. I think we should open our beautiful auditorium with a brand new musical that I have written myself based on Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. To be fair, it's not a new auditorium. It's just slightly renovated. Okay, well, this material presents us with an opportunity to expose the system's propensity for elevating the mediocre. I mean, it's the dumbing down of the masses. This topic could not be more relevant today. Atlas Shrugged? Are you kidding me? And anyway, I think she was thinking of the Fountainhead. Yeah, I mean, that Ram lady, she was a bitch. I mean, just dissatisfied with everything. <laughs> I was impressed. I was just surprised she'd read it. Oh, you don't have to read the whole book. No, 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 no. Cliff's notes are actually perfect when you're writing a musical. Breaks up the song selections just perfectly. I've prepared, um... Just a small little pitch, if you want to hear it. We open with our heroine, Dagny Taggart, who's tired of always having to you know, cover for her brother, James. He's totally incompetent. And she sings, uh, Jamie, Jamie, you're failing us all. If dad was alive, he'd throw you through a wall or something like that. I haven't thought it through yet, but um, she refuses to conform. Okay, so picture this. Full-scale production number in the factory. It's never been done. It's never been done, right? Like steel railway workers with, you know, um, the soot covering their faces. You know, it's, it's kind of like um, Les Mis meets um, Martin Gare meets uh, the Pirate Queen. Steel, steel, gotta get another meal. Steel, steel, if it's not iron, it's not real. But what will we do in the end if our stubborn fool leader will not bend? Ba -bum, bum, bum, bum. You know, it's really masculine. The drum's just building there. And, um, oh, oh, later, later, there's a love duet between Dagny and her main rival, Hank Reardon, who's also destroying the company, okay? The men are just completely incompetent. You are the copper in my heart. Our steel and iron will never part. Maybe for once, we should think twice and create an industrial paradise. And then bam, lightning bolt, bam. And that's, that's when the showgirls come in, you know, with their little like steel worker outfits. Stacey, you can help with that. And they're, you know, they're doing fan kicks and jazz hands, pyrotechnics everywhere. Just, you know, the cannons just everywhere. And they do it like a kickball change, kickball change, you know, pivot, pivot, and fuetes, you know, going around. And then they all end with big, big explosion of lightning bolts and jazz hands. Huh?
So we decided on a talent show. And we're excited to um, showcase our students' many talents. Souls. She does have the same facial hair as most of the boys when they're 30. But for a 12-year-old, she's amazing. 